welcome to the Core Confidence Life podcast here on Core Confidence TV. I am your host, Dennis, broadcasting to you right here in New York City. Don't forget to follow us on all social media. So if you haven't subscribed to this uh, YouTube, go ahead and do that now. You can also follow us on Twitter all right, and Facebook as well. You can hear the podcast on all the podcatchers you can think of, including Apple and, and Stitcher and Spotify and things like that, right? And you can also go to our website to look at everything that we do here at Core Confidence Life to help you become an unstuck person. From public speaking to uh, mindset transformation, it's all here at Core Confidence Life. On today's program, we have a youth empowerment speaker and author, and he's coming to us today to share his message about breaking free of your limiting beliefs. It's only our limiting beliefs that keep us where we are. Nothing is impossible. So if we can believe it, when we work towards it, we're breaking free of any limitations we've got. And we all know, well, first, that Eddie Thomason is directing his message towards the youth, towards young teens growing into men. And we know that having strong male role models is critical in a boy's life. And Eddie's goal is to uh, create more young boys that turn into men of character. Right? And so that's what we're talking about on the program today. It's a great conversation. He shares his... Uh, personal story, and him and I even get into a very frank discussion about our early sex life. So it's definitely a, a show you'd want to watch. So Eddie Thomason here, Unlock Yourself, right? Breaking free of personal self limitations. And we'll get to that interview right after this commercial break, and then we're going to go right into our interview. Surviving Georgie is the true story of a little boy growing up in Pennsylvania Dutch country, 1949 to 1956. Although it's been called one of the funniest books ever printed, it's actually a history book about America's age of innocence, seen through the eyes of a little boy. Faith, family, community, and the one-room school. You will love it. You can buy Surviving Georgie at survivinggeorgie.com or Amazon. And we are on the program. We are interviewing Eddie Thomason, and he is a youth public speaker. And we're going to be talking about everything having to do with youth and personal development and building yourself up to be the best you can be. What's going on, Eddie? What's going on? How's it going, Dennis? I appreciate you having me on, man. I'm so excited uh, for this, this discussion and this conversation. And just love what you do, my man. <laughs> well, hey, I appreciate that. Uh, appreciate that very much. Now, so tell everybody uh, a little bit more about you other than what I just said, because, you know, you can tell you better <laughs> than I can tell you. <laughs> Absolutely, my man. So I, I guess I'll give somebody a little bit of a background. But I was born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland. I grew up in a family that struggled with poverty for generations. And, um, you know, I basically saw my mom kind of struggle from paycheck to paycheck. I saw the people around me just struggling to make ends meet. And I, I, from my perspective, I decided that that wasn't going to stop or that was going to stop with me. I didn't want to be stuck in that same rut in life. Um, so I just decided to start making some different decisions, which basically led to me being the first male in my family to ever earn a college degree. OK, um, which then, you know, basically the, the mindset behind all of that is I, I, I was able to get myself out of a bad situation because my dad left when I was only, I think, seven or eight years old, which then allowed me to become, you know, a kid that grew up in a single family household <laughs> where my mom basically was forced to take care of me and my brother on a $13,000 a year disability income. So it was a different type of situation, different type of environment. Uh, I basically felt as though I only had three options. 
which is I feel as though a lot of kids that grew up that grow up in that type of environment, they feel the same way. But my, my options was either go to the league, right, become a professional athlete. It was either the other option was to be a professional entertainer. So a singer, rapper, dancer, something like that, or sell drugs. Right. And oh, I, chose, what an option. <laughs> oh. I chose option one. Right. I decided I was going to go to the league. I wanted to basically play football and be able to go to the NFL. And because of that dream and because of that, that goal that I had, I became the first student in my high school to ever earn a D one scholarship in Chesapeake high school's history. So now my mission, my passion is basically helping kids shed those self-limiting beliefs and live a life that they're passionate about living. I don't want them to have that same thought process that I had when I was growing up. <laughs> mm, all right. That, that's a great, great background that you have spoken about there. And we'll get into a lot of those different things. Mm -hmm. So what, what issues do you mainly speak about when you're in front of today's youth? What do you speak <laughs> about mainly? Primarily just shedding self-limiting beliefs. I think a lot of the times we don't believe in ourselves, uh, what we can actually accomplish in life. And I personally believe that we all are born with the seeds of greatness inside of us. We are all meant to do great things. And sometimes when you're born into an environment, environment where maybe you're stuck in poverty or you know, your surrounding area just basically tells you that you can only be one thing, which for me, it was basically go to jail or be dead before you're even 18 years old, right? Um, if I want to help kids break that belief that that is all that life has to offer, um, because there's so many different opportunities and things out there that kids can take advantage of to really increase their lifestyle and increase the, the life that they want to live. Mm, okay. So limiting beliefs. So, you know, we talk about limiting beliefs all the time and changing your mind frame and just how you think about things. So talk to us a little bit more about limiting beliefs. What are limiting beliefs and what do they do to us? Absolutely. So a limiting belief is something that you believe about yourself that is just not true. It's a box that you place yourself in that, that doesn't allow you to, like, to, to break out, right? It basically leaves you confined inside of one individual section. Um, what it does to you is it prevents you from stepping into your own greatness. A lot of the times we limit ourselves with these these thoughts, like for me growing up, it was like, I only had those three options, right? Like I thought that was all I had. If I wasn't picking one of those three, then I was just going to be a failure in life in general, where obviously, thankfully, you know, as I got out of that environment and started to associate with other people, I started to realize that there are other options available, right? So their self-limiting beliefs are, are detrimental to your ability to succeed in life. Because if you only put yourself inside of one box, then you, you basically close yourself off to all other opportunities and all other um, abilities that you have within you to create the success that you want. Mm, limiting beliefs stops you and closes off your options. Amen. So, so what other kinds of limiting beliefs have you struggled with? Like what have you had to overcome as far as your limiting beliefs? So, you know, personal experience, you know? <laughs> Absolutely, man. Um, I mean, there's there's a bunch. We can literally be on here talking uh, talking oh, all sure. day. Sure. Well, give me the, the <laughs> give me the biggest one, the the one or two big ones that you really had a hard time getting over, but yet you was able to climb that mountain. Absolutely. So one of them was the one that we already talked about in regards to just feeling like you know I was born into an environment and that that I wasn't really going to be able to succeed because my like I said, my mom and dad both had GEDs. My brother only had a GED. My sister was the only one that actually graduated from high school. So I felt to myself, like, this is, this is what I got, right? And this is kind of what I was born into. So this is kind of my ceiling. I had to break that self-limiting belief. So that was one of them. And that kind of ties back into the story that we already shared. But the other one was just, just that thought that I was going to end up like my dad. Because today I have, I have two boys. And one of them is 16 months, well, going on 16 months, and the other one is going on three months. So they're, they're two young tykes at this point. But I never wanted to turn into the guy that my dad was. And my dad abused alcohol. He abused drugs. He also abused my mom. And I never wanted to have that, that, uh, that same home style, that same life that he created. So uh, I used to have this belief like, man, I don't know if I want to get into a relationship or stay committed to anybody because I don't know of that that man who is my dad is also inside of me. Like if I was going to revert back to any of the, the actions or things that he took. So that was something that I definitely had to overcome that allowed me 
to really be a dad today, right? A husband, a loving husband and a loving dad. And I love what I do now. And I know for sure that I won't revert back to his ways because although he was, you know, a part of, of making me, <laughs> he's not, he's not yeah, the a little determining bit fact. Exactly. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but, Although he was a part of that, um, I don't have to basically subject myself and say, hey, I'm going to be exactly the way he was. So those are two big ones inside of my life. And uh, yeah, that's, they, they've been the huge hurdles for me to overcome. Okay, so um, just to drill a little deeper there, when you said that you have gotten over these things, what, what methods did you, did you just wake up and go, I'm over it, yay? Or <laughs> was it a little bit more of a, a, an obstacle? How did you walk yourself through those limiting beliefs? A lot of it is the support system. So my wife is, is, a, is a rock in my life, okay? Like a rock in my family in general. Um, it's the support system of people that you have around you. So my wife is a huge proponent in just having obviously conversations. I think a lot of healing comes from conversing. You have to first communicate what's going on inside of your head before any type of uh, healing can take place. So a lot of it was just me voicing those those fears, those concerns out to her, um, as well as to my mom and obviously having conversations with my older brother as well. And then them just reassuring me, man, like, to be honest with you, it was a lot of, uh, a lot of them basically speaking life into me and saying like, Hey man, listen, your entire life, you had no tendencies or no examples of you even reverting back to anything that our dad has done or that your dad has done. So at that point, why would you accept that limiting belief over yourself? Why would you accept that thought over yourself? And obviously listening to those, uh, those advisors in my life, but also internalizing it and believing it for myself, um, that's, that's the way that the, the, the transition is taking place. So if you need a, a roadmap, it was basically first recognizing that fear inside of myself, communicating that to the people that have been around me, and then accepting that, that encouragement for myself and that belief in myself, and then living it out in action. Okay, so that's if you need steps, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so we look, we look at, we're, yeah, that's right. We're looking for actionable steps, girl, <laughs> to take on the world. Right? Love it. <laughs> uh, right. So now, in, in this um, in this journey you've gone through, what what made you decide that you wanted to talk to to little boys about this instead of adults? Like, because you know, you, you we make choices on the audiences that we want to appeal to. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, what made you choose the youth of the nation? Absolutely, man. I feel like that's where, that's where a lot of impact can take place. I feel like when you can reach out to a younger, like a younger person, and just to clarify, although I say youth, a lot of the times I try to stick between that 16 to 22 year old age range. Um, however, I do speak at middle schools. I speak at um, those, those younger age groups as well. But overall, I think when you find uh, somebody in, in, in life that is going through tough times, the biggest impression you can have on them is inside of their youth. When they're still open-minded, they're not necessarily stuck in their ways yet or have this certain viewpoint of the world that this is how life is gonna be forever. I think the earlier you expose youth to different opportunities and different possibilities, the better belief they have in themselves that they can actually accomplish the bigger dreams and bigger goals that they have inside of their life. So um, like, for example, for me, I know my mindset was a lot of the times changed when I actually heard from a youth speaker myself as a kid. So it was actually Ray Lewis, who's Baltimore's pride and joy when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens. And he was speaking at a different youth event. And I remember feeling so empowered, like, wow, here's this guy that came from similar background as me, similar situations, yet he was able to become a man that honestly led the Ravens for, I think it was 20 seasons or whatever it was. Like, it was crazy. <laughs> but when I heard that guy's story, I was like, man, here, here's the light bulb that went off in my head, right? That light bulb of like, okay, I'm not stuck here. I'm not, I don't have to be here for the rest of my life. I have the opportunity to create something more. And that was huge for me. Mm. You know, when people ask me certain questions about my role models and who, what male did I look up to and so forth and all mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I always say, you know, I didn't have really examples of, of manhood. I had to kind of learn that myself. You know, I, I, you know, I had a father, but he died when I was a little younger. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, people got caught up with all kinds of other things that had nothing to do with my actual upbringing. Right. So I had to kind of go out there and live life and 
get into whatever to learn how to be a man myself. I didn't know right. what that was, how to comport myself. Right. So how did you learn that? Was it Ray Lewis? Was it in another man that you turned to? What was your example of manhood? How did you learn how to move into that stage? I love that you brought this up, Dennis, because my entire life, up until I was about 22 years old, was a direct reflection of doing the exact opposite of all the male figures in my life. So same as you, I didn't have a positive example of someone who was like, wow, this dude is amazing. He's got the best family life, the best job situation, the best financial situation. I didn't have that example when I was growing up. All I had was uh, some bad examples, right? I had some bad eggs. <laughs> so, bad eggs. <laughs> Smelly so from, and bad and cracked and ugly. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So if like from my perspective, I felt as though I needed to do the exact opposite. And that's what I did. I literally observed those around me and I realized that I didn't want to end up in the same situations that they were in. And I just did the exact opposite, right? Like my, my brother, love him, love him to life. Uh, but he, he, he had kids much early on in life, way before he was, ex, you know, expected to have kids or he wanted to have kids himself. And his kids are amazing today, man. Like I love my nieces and nephews, but it, it, it limited his ability to go out and chase some different things that he wanted to chase inside of his life. Right. Um, my dad, you know, being as though he, he was abusing drugs, abusing alcohol, and like I said, abusing my mom. I was like, I don't, I don't want to have that type of family. I don't want to have that type of household. I don't want to be addicted to anything. Right. I wanted to be a master of me. I didn't want anything to be mastering me. So therefore, I felt as though I had to just do things differently. Um, and, until I was about 22, I would say I was running from it, right? I was running from um, those, those situations and those circumstances. And I didn't want to end up that way. So I was, I was basically navigating my own life without having some type of compass of just of where I didn't want to be, right? Until I was 22 years old. And then I realized like, man, I got a mentor in my life who had a successful marriage. He, he was a successful business owner. He was a successful dad. And I saw, I saw a true example of a positive man that I can follow. Um, but prior to that, I'm just like you, man, I had to figure it out on my own. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and, you know, going out there and, you know, I had to make my own mistakes and yep. um, just pay the consequences for what my mistakes were or whatever it was. Because, yep. you know, you look at the media and, you look towards the media because sometimes when you don't have an actual model at home or around mm -hmm. you, you look outside. What are your friends doing? What's in the media? Yep. And all of those things were full of caricatures and stereotypes and yep. screwed up ideas of manhood. So <laughs> since yep. that was my only compass, I'm like, well, I don't know. I don't really, I'm not like that, you know? So right, right. Exactly. I to figure, okay. So well, what am I? What kind of a man am I? I mean, I, yep. I'm not like those people. Um, I don't mm -hmm. feel like a woman. <laughs> so, you know, um, right. I don't have perky bosoms. So <laughs> what, what, what am I to do to figure out right. how to comport myself as, as, a, as, a, as a man? Right. So uh, thank you I for mean, sharing that journey. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and I'll add just another note here for anybody who's listening. You, what I tell people all the time is a lot of the times it, it helps when you have a positive example. But when you don't have a positive example, don't use it as an excuse of why you can't succeed. Um, just like, just like me and just like Dennis, if you, if you have an idea of what you don't want to be, you can, you can surely figure out who you do want to be. Um, and you can start figuring out those character traits and things that you want to embody. And then you work at just developing into that person every single day. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. It's not, it's definitely not a walk in the park, but it's, it's worth it to create a life that you want to live. <laughs> I say, well, what else are you going to do? You're here and you want to, we all want a form of success, whatever that means. We all want right. a form of happiness, whatever that means. So, you know, your life is going to move forward anyway. So what do you want it to be? Exactly. Yep. I agree hundred <laughs> yeah, percent. Absolutely. So, um, you know, what, um, do you have any books or anything that you've written of uh, that help deliver your message or what else do you do? Do you, do you coach individually? Like what else do you do to service our, our youth today? Absolutely, my man. So I definitely wrote a book. Uh, it actually, you know, humble brag. I launched it April 24th of this year and it, it quickly rose to the Amazon bestseller list in eight different categories. 
within the first week, which was pretty dope. Um, I'm a big faith guy. I give all the honor and glory to the man upstairs. Uh, but it's, it's, it's been a whirlwind, man. It's been a, a long ride. And I've been having a lot of fun with it. But it's primarily, like I said, written for those who are between 16 to 24 years of age. And uh, it's, it's honestly a roadmap. It's what I wish I had when I was 16 right? It's a, it's a, it's a quick outline of like, Hey, here's where you start, which is basically developing an upshot or, or basically a vision for your life, what you want it to look like, how you want, how you want to live, right? The lifestyle that you want to have. And then it starts to help you add all the different steps that it takes in order for you to get to that vision, to get to that lifestyle. And I love it because it's, it's literally so applicable and what the feedback that I've been getting is it sounds like I'm sitting across the table and talking to you directly, which is exactly the message that I wanted to give, but I didn't know if exactly if it was going to come through like that. But the feedback that I've been getting and all the reviews and things like that is like, wow, it's like the man is sitting across from me at the table. So I appreciate it. If you have a chance to pick it up, that's, uh, that's, that's a pride and joy of mine. <laughs> Well, how about maybe you can give us a sneak preview, like give us, what, what are some of the tips or steps in that book? Let's say I'm, I'm a 16 year old dude and I'm watching this podcast on YouTube somehow. Um, <laughs> and uh, I wanna know, like what are some of these steps? What, what am I getting when I get this book? Do you have any, any, anything you wanna share to entice us? Definitely, my man. So I'll give you the, I'll give you the meaning behind the title in itself first. And then I'll come back and, and basically talk about what, what the, the formula is that's inside of it. So sure. when you think about the title, uh, it's Unlock Yourself, How to Earn the Success You Were Born to Create. And that title goes back to what we already mentioned inside of this conversation, which is you are already born with the seeds of greatness inside of you. You already have it there. However, you need to plant those seeds in an environment that allows you to grow. You have to start to figure out ways to nourish your seed so that you can grow, okay? Now the unlock yourself part is because you have, you are in control of you, okay? You are in control of you. So therefore, you have to figure out how to get out of your own way, shed those self-limiting beliefs like we've been talking about. However, the, it, within that unlock yourself title is the formula or the acronym unlock you. And that formula, like I said, goes through the start which the you is basically an upshot. So it's basically getting an idea of where you want to go, where you want to be, the situation in life that you actually want to have and starting to develop that vision behind, behind your life and your goals, okay? The next part is the end, which is, is negativity. When you make any big decision, when you decide to do something bigger than what you're currently sitting in as far as situations, you're going to get hit with negativity. You're going to get hit with people telling you can't do something. You're going to get hit with people saying that you can't overcome whatever you're going through. And those people, I tell them you have to learn to cap the negative. You got to shut them off and just, just get rid of them. Sometimes it's going to be family members. Sometimes it's siblings. Sometimes it's friends. You have to shut those people out so that you can continue to pursue what your vision is, that thing that you want to, that you want to get to. The, the next part of that is the L, which is listening, okay? You have to learn to listen to those who tell you that you can. So like, just like me, I had people that in my life told me I couldn't amount to anything, but I also had great encouragers in my life, like my mom and like my brother and people who believed in me and had a higher expectation for my life. And those are the people I chose to listen to because they gave me life, they encouraged me with life. Um, and if you don't have those people in your home, then you gotta start realizing that you can, Listen to podcasts like you're doing right now. You can go to YouTube. There's so many different areas that you can go to that will fill you up with encouragement, okay? Ed Milet, Ed Milet podcast, Tony Robbins podcast, Dennis's podcast. You have options that's literally in the palm of your hand, right? So that's the listening side of it. The next part is O, which is optimize. And that's basically growing your association. So I call it optimizing your growth environment. And that's all about the people that you hang out with. Here's what I say all the time. If you're pursuing something bigger in life, if you have a bigger vision, then you have to surround yourself with other big visionaries, okay? S plain and simple, let's put it this way. If, you, if you're an entrepreneur, say you, you're travel, you wanna be an entrepreneur, you wanna build this huge business, stop hanging around with so many employees. Employees and entrepreneurs don't think the same. So you have to put yourself in a room that allows you to think like those who you want to be like, okay, who you want to mimic. So that's, that's the optimized portion. The C is choices. And I spend probably the most time in the book on this chapter because your choices will determine your life, okay? 
Success is literally a series of positive choices compounded over time. So you want to start making choices that one, support your upshot, but two, allows you to build trust with people. The choices that you make today will allow people to trust you later on in life. So make sure that you're making positive choices day in and day out so that it would lead to the success that you want to create. The K part is knowledge. And I'm pretty sure, Dennis, you've probably heard this as much as I have. People always say knowledge is power. And I hate that statement because <laughs> I feel like there's a, there's a word missing, right? Applied. Applied knowledge is power. You can literally pick up a book or think to yourself that you're gathering information for days, but until you take action on the knowledge that's inside of your head, it is wasted information. So just like the book that you'll be reading, if you pick it up, or even the knowledge that you're getting from this conversation, if you don't do anything with it, then it's not any power to you at all. Okay. So you have to learn how to start applying what's inside of your head so that you can create the success that you want inside of your life. So that's the first part of the acronym. That's the unlock part. The next part or the next word is you, which is the, the why part of that is yearn. And like I said, I'm a big faith guy. So a lot of people may have not heard the word yearn all the time, but yearning is a deep desire to succeed. You have to have this resolve, this mindset that it doesn't matter the obstacles that come in my way. It doesn't matter the circumstances that I was born into. I will be successful. Actually, scratch that. I am successful. Speak it as though it's already done, okay? That deep yearning is, is necessary because here's, here's a newsflash. If you want to create success, you're going to get hit with obstacles. Bad things are going to happen. But what determines whether or not you're going to succeed is whether or not you overcome those obstacles and you, and you push through that adversity. That's how you're going to become successful. So that's that deep yearning, that desire to just be better in life, right? Uh, the U, I mean, I'm sorry, the O, the second part, the second O side of there is observe. We already talked about observing other people because that's what I did for the majority of my life. I observed others and basically did the opposite. But in observing, you have to learn how to observe failures. So people that have done bad things, but don't spend all your time there. You just want to know the traits so that you can avoid them, right? Then you also want to start to observe those who have created success in the avenues in which you're pursuing because success principles leave clues. If you can observe those individuals, then you're only gonna learn how to avoid the same mistakes that they made, right? Let's think about all the businesses that are out today, and a lot of people were second movers or third movers inside of these industries because they observed the failures of the people that went before them, and now they're amazing at what they do, right? It's like, like a Netflix. <laughs> I, know, I know all the young people that know about Netflix today. <laughs> Netflix. Now they Netflix won't know about Blockbuster. Chill. Right. They exactly. know about Netflix and chill, let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now they won't know about Blockbuster, but they oh, definitely know who oh Netflix God. is. Blockbuster video. Wow. What a difference. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the huge thing. And then I'll wrap up with the last one, Dennis, which is you, and that's unending. The process of you unlocking yourself is unending. You never get to a point where you just arrive, okay? You're not, you're not gonna wake up and be like, oh, I'm the most amazing person in the world and now I'm done, right? It's just life doesn't work that way. Once you hit your goals, your upshot, whatever else, you're gonna have to develop a new upshot because the passion always comes inside of the pursuit, which means you have to stay in pursuit of something, okay? So that process is just unending. You always have to think about what's next. What's next? Because you're not, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards by default, okay? There's no such thing as standing still. So that's a quick snippet. I know that's, that's, that was a little bit of a long explanation, but that is the book in its entirety. <laughs> that's the mindset behind it, and that's the journey that I take you through. Um, and also, if you, if you just want a, a workbook to help you also plan out your thoughts and everything so you can apply the knowledge that's inside of that book, I also give out a free workbook as well. So that's inside the book, should you choose to buy it. But you can also download it for free at eddiethomason.com slash unlock yourself. So that's, that's a quick snippet. <laughs> oh, that's just a quick snippet. <laughs> Actually, I like all those themes in the book. And uh, there's, a, there's a couple of things there that I think are key, you know, because all those things are important. But as you know, um, being a a speaker and, and a writer, you know that there's some concepts that jump out to you more than other ones. Absolutely. Um, yep. And one of those big ones that I got from this 
was the C, which I always preach this all the time, the choices. Mm -hmm. You know, we always have a choice. Yep. Even if we don't like our options, we always have a choice. Absolutely. We are never without choices. And our choices create domino effects that, uh, which will bring forth results. So the choices that you make, you're going to have to live with those consequences. Amen. And then when those consequences present themselves, you have more choices. So it's just <laughs> continuous. Another thing you said, applied knowledge. That's great. That's, that's more than just knowledge. It's actually using it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the unending part. Mm -hmm. You know, personal development is a never ending story. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and it's, a, it's a forever yellow brick road yep. of progress and positivity. So yep. never think that you're done. And in fact, you may know this saying, the more you know, the more you know, you don't know. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. People yep. think, oh, I'm getting older, I'm getting smarter. No, you're going to discover that you don't know a lot of things. Exactly. You have no idea what you don't know. <laughs> I talk about that actually inside the book. I tell people all the time, hey, you don't know what you don't know. So therefore, you should always be knowing. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you should be knowing what you don't be knowing so you can try to know it. Exactly. <laughs> so, so now being that you, you speak to our, our youth, 16 to 24 and so forth, and so mm -hmm. that's a very uh, dis discovery-based time for, for young men. They, when they're right. just coming into their manhood, they're still handling... Uh, their sexuality, they're still handling relationships and school and whatever mm -hmm. it is. So what kind of tips or advice would you have for uh, young men trying to, nav let's say, navigate relationships or navigate sex or navigate thinking about high school and college or anything mm -hmm. like that? Pick, pick one of those or all of those and what would, you, <laughs> what would you do to help our youth today, sir? Absolutely, my man. That, that is a great question. I think it's definitely a loaded question because there's so many different directions that you can go with it. Absolutely. But the one that I'm actually going to pick, because one, I think, it's, I think it's a tough conversation and more of us need to have it, is basically our, our men, our youth men and sex. Ah, because, you, yeah, you, you definitely picked the deep <laughs> one right there. I definitely picked the deep one there. And, I, and the reason why is because of, of just my story. I feel like um, my, my mentality and things when I was going through high school, um, I was, I was actually a virgin until I was, I think I was 16, 17 years old. And, um, that was the reason why here's, here's the primary reason why I had sex. I felt as though since I had a D one scholarship, I didn't want to get made fun of when I got to college and, and people found out that I was a virgin. So I literally tried to just figure out a way to have sex so that I could then go to college and be like, all right. I, I'm, I'm fair game, right? I'm, yeah, free I'm a man. I'm in college. <laughs> I done had it. Ugh, yeah, I'm a man. <laughs> All right. Exactly. That was my thought process. And I'm, and I'm be honest with you right now, Dennis, that was probably one of the worst decisions that I ever made in my life because it, it put me on a path of like uh, this, this, this stereotypical D1 athlete, like wanted to just do anything that I wanted to do anytime that I wanted to do it. And it was such a poor mentality because it was so disrespectful to women and so disrespectful to a lot of the other, you know, females that I was involved with throughout high school and also throughout college. And, uh, and ultimately, by the time I found my wife, the woman who I love and, the, and, and, and my, my soulmate, my other half, it made me, uh, it made me basically feel like I was, I wasn't giving her all of me. Right. Like it made, it made me feel like all, it was pieces of me that was already out inside the world and I couldn't fully give her my, me, my, my entire self. And um, that was a tough pill for me to swallow because it made me think about all the different uh, interactions and relationships that I had with, with previous females. And it, if, I can all, if I can go back and take it all away, I would. Because it's, it's not something that I was proud of. It's definitely not something that I'm proud of today. You don't have to get stuck in this whole mindset of, oh, I'm the man, right? Because I went out here and I got these cheeks. Right. You don't definitely have to have that mentality because once you find the woman that, that, that is for you, the woman that's there for you and the woman that's, uh, that's going to care about you, no matter what, no matter what circumstances you're going through, basically your ride or die, then you want to be able to give your entire self to them. And, um, I, and the more that you can reserve your, your entire self to be with that one individual, I think that's more impressive than anything else. Now, I know a lot of guys might not want to hear that, um, but that is just my own personal reflection, my own personal story, because I don't want other people, other guys to end up like me, where they felt like 
they were chasing the cookie the entire time. And yeah. then by the time they found the cookie that was for them, right, like their cookie, then now they felt as though they didn't have everything to offer, right? So that's my advice. Um, hopefully, you know, somebody takes it and finds that valuable. <laughs> Well, that, that's great. You know, you, you know, you did better than me because, you know, um, I didn't I didn't ha I didn't have intercourse in, until I was like 18. But right. I was lying about it the whole time. I had people yeah. believing that I lo that I lost at 11 years old. Wow. All right. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, what? a lot of my friends, they lost it at 12, 13, 14. Right. And I had done other things short of intercourse during those right. times. But I didn't I didn't actually get up in them cheeks. Right, right. Until later on, <laughs> but I wanted people to believe they had already done it like them. Right. So, uh, right. you know, so I was lying basically for, for a while. I right. didn't even break the truth until I became an adult. Right. Um, so, and, and I think what you're talking about, young men and sex are very important topics to talk about because you don't learn how to control yourself nope. uh, because a lot of parents are uncomfortable with talking about sex and sexuality. The schools right. don't teach it, and at least not in the way that it really needs to be taught. Right. Um, and so it's important for young men to have this addressed in a, what I call a no holds bar, straightforward way. You know, Absolutely. how do you deal with your burgeoning sexual urges? What do you do with those? How do you right. treat people, women, whoever you're into respectfully? Right. Um, right. All of these different things um, around men and sexuality that aren't spoken about by the schools. And I know everyone says, oh, well, that's the parent's job and moral this and moral that. <laughs> But right. a lot of parents don't have this discussion either. So that's not working. Exactly. This educate your kids on morality at home is not working. Mm -hmm. So we need to find another way of doing that. And so I'm glad that you chose that topic. Absolutely, my man. And I would also say, you know, for, for, our, for the young men that's out there, in, in order to be a man of character, right, you have to be very intentional with what what you're talking to these women, right? So I, I, have, a, I have a passion for um, helping, helping kids and people understand in general that women are valuable. I grew up, like I said, in a household where my mom was not valued, yet she was one of the most giving and, and compassionate people to ever walk this earth, right? And she still is walking this earth, so I said that like she was already gone, but she's still here. <laughs> and from that, I want people to understand like, bro, if you're, if your intentions is not pure and what you're, what you're looking to get from another female, communicate that and let them make the decision on their own about what, how they want to proceed. Okay. And in the end, no means no, <laughs> no means no. Don't try to force people into situations that they don't want to be in. I mean, my mom was raped when she was 15 years old or 14 years old. And that's actually how my sister was born. So I definitely don't want anybody to be in those type of situations. And I don't want you to be the father of a child that you're not ready to be a father to yet. And you can't even lead yourself, right? So that is just some, um, it was just on my heart. I felt like I wanted to share it. Be pure in your intentions. Absolutely. And if somebody tells you no, walk away. And, and also I want to add to that, it, it, first certainly don't violate other people, don't rape other people, but also don't violate and rape yourself. Don't do yeah. something that you don't feel comfortable doing just because you think, oh, well, if I do this, I'll be, I'll be considered a man. Or if I yeah. do this, then I'll have stories from my homeboys when mm -hmm. you really don't want to be there. I used to do that. I used to get with people and do things that I really didn't really want to do. Yep. So I raped myself right. because I didn't, didn't really want to do that. I didn't want to have sex to prove points. I would, right. I would have rather have felt more comfortable with certain people than I did. And, but right. I did it anyway because, well, fuck, I'm a man. Right, right. And, and it's available and, you know, whatever. So right. don't violate other people, but also don't violate yourself. If, if it's a situation right. you really don't feel comfortable being in for whatever reason, mm -hmm. don't do it. Right, exactly. Just don't do it. <laughs> and you may exactly. end up embarrassing yourself too, because sometimes if I'm not into something, then, you know, the man downstairs ain't going to be responsive because I'm just not into it. So, <laughs> you, go. you know, you're going to end up embarrassing yourself, too, if you force yourself into something that you don't really want to be. Exactly. And nobody likes to be embarrassed. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Especially not in that way. Right, right. Exactly. Word Absolutely. travels. <laughs> so, you know, where can people find out more about I know you gave your website earlier, but that was a century ago. So yeah. <laughs> where can we find you at? Where, where can, where's your book? Where's your website? Where's all this material that you've been spitting on the program today? You know? 
So all of that information, if you just go to eddiethomason.com, so that's E-D-D-I-E-T-H-O-M-A-S-O-N. Do not put a P in there. Get the P out, okay? <laughs> eddiethomason.com. You can find all the different social medias. I'm, all, I'm across everything, man. I'm like from TikTok to Instagram to, to LinkedIn. But where I spend the majority of my time is on LinkedIn. So if you want any you know, additional conversations or anything like that, please reach out to me on LinkedIn um, because that's where I spend the majority of my time, right? But here's what I also like to say to anybody is sometimes when we're listening to, when we're listening to these types of conversations, we put the people that are being interviewed on pedestals. Like, oh, they're untouchable. I can't reach out to them. I'm afraid to. He has his life in order or whatever else. Listen, here's what I tell people all the time. I'm just a regular dude. I'm a regular dude who made some really simple yet positive decisions, and it led to me being where I am today. So therefore, I don't put myself on a pedestal. I'm not this whole egotistical maniac saying I did everything on my own. I, was, I don't think self-made is a thing. I had a lot of people around me that was helping me. So why I say all that is because if you have questions or you just want to reach out, if you want to just initiate a discussion with me specifically, reach out, man. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be the guy that's turning you away or won't respond to you for 16 months or anything like that. Like I'm here to help. Okay. And if I can't help, I know somebody in my network can. So I always like to extend that to anybody who's listening. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and for those who are listening, um, I like to always ask this question. Like, mm -hmm. so if somebody really wanted to get closer to their dreams, get past limiting beliefs, all of these things, get control of who they are as a, as a, as a young burgeoning man, whatever you want to choose from, what's the one thing they can do right now um, after this podcast, of course, um, that they can do <laughs> right now before going to your site, before calling me up and whatever, what can they do right now? Make a decision. The one thing that you can do right now is make a decision. That's the first step in action is you have to de first decide in your mind that you're going to become successful in order for you to create success. If you're, if you're, Halfway in, halfway out, don't really know if you're going to be successful or not. You, 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 got, you got to ditch that mentality and you got to say, listen, I am successful. And that's the decision that's being made because now all those opportunities are going to start coming your way because of the decision that you made. Wow. All right. Eddie Thomason, and, and don't put the P there. Take, take your P out. <laughs> that's right. Take your P out. Right. Thomason. <laughs> I guess a lot of people make that mistake, Thompson or whatever, whatever, whatever it would be. Yep, Thompson, or they just end it and say Thomas, and I'm like, no, nope, that's yeah. not it. <laughs> it's amazing how people just mess up names that are right in front of them, like you know. <laughs> Tell I've me had about people it. pronounce my name Denise. Like, really? Come on, bro. Denise. <laughs> I got your Denise right here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> After this, you won't call me Denise. But uh, <laughs> thank you for coming on the program and sharing your wealth of knowledge and your, and, and your experience. And thanks for being so transparent and talking about really, you know, what some people would consider personal issues. I appreciate yeah. that. Absolutely, my man. Transparency is key. I mean, you can't trust nobody unless you know who they are. So I'm, I'm, I've been working on it, uh, just being more transparent and just raw. But you'll also find out about me. I don't have secrets, man. I'm pretty much an open book. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thanks for coming on the show, man. Absolutely, Dennis. Thanks for having me, my man. <laughs> if you'd like to be a guest on the Core Confidence Life podcast, just fill out our application by going to coreconfidencelife.com slash guest. That's coreconfidencelife.com slash guest. We appreciate you and all your feedback. So to give us comments about the podcast or anything else, just send a message to Dennis at coreconfidencelife.com. That's Dennis at coreconfidencelife.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and all the social media outlets, of course, at Core Confidence Life. I'm your host, Dennis, from New York City, giving you higher consciousness, lower stress, hard-hitting manhood issues, with just a side of cornball humor.